the lines y equals to x plus 1 and y equals to minus x plus 7 are the axes of symmetry of this function. So this function is a hyperbola, and we have learned that a hyperbola, um, for example, will have asymptotes like there and there, for example, and then they're going to have uh, two parts, and then they've got these symmetry lines that go through this point like that. And they always have the same gradient, well, not, that, not as each other, but this one always has a gradient of 1, and then this one always has a gradient of minus 1, always. And that's what they're saying. One of them has a gradient of 1, and one of them has a gradient of minus 1. Um, and they're saying that it's the axes of symmetry. So they say, now remember that this part here is your vertical asymptote, the one that goes like this. And then this here is your horizontal asymptote, the one that goes like this. So this is your horizontal asymptote. So if I can take this equation, and I can take this equation, and I can make them equal to each other, that'll help me to find this little point in the middle here, right? Once I have that point, then I know the equations of these asymptotes. For example, if this point over here is 3 and 1, then I know that this x value is a 3, and I know that this y value is a 1. And then I could get my equations. But this is just an example, okay? So let's ignore that one now, and let's go make these two equations equal to each other. So x plus 1 equals to minus x minus 7. If I take this x over, I would end up with 2x. And if I bring this over to the right-hand side, I would end up with minus 8. And so if I solve for x, I end up with minus 4. Then to find the y value, I can just plug that x value into any of these equations. So I'm just going to use the first one. And so y is minus 3. So if I had to go draw these two, um, if I had to go draw x is minus 4, that would be somewhere and then y is minus 3, that would be somewhere over here. So the dotted lines, the asymptotes would go through that point. And so this would be y is equal to minus 3, and this would be x equals to minus 4. So that now helps us to know what to do here. Be careful, though. Can you see that the graph is four places to the left? So that actually means that here we're going to say x plus 4, not x minus 4. Because when you move left, it says plus, and when you move right, um, right, it means minus. And then this part here, this will be normal. So this means we've moved three places down, so you'll just say minus 3. So when you then go, well, actually, then we could say, therefore, uh, well, the equation is going to be f of x equals to minus 2 over x plus 4. And then Q would be minus 3. So we can see then that P is 4 and Q is minus 3. And that's exactly what they wanted us to show. Now it says calculate the x-intercept. To find an x-intercept, you make y 0. And so you end up with this. Okay. Now all you do here is you take this minus 3 to the other side. So you'd end up with 3 equals to minus 2 over x plus 4. Then I just want you to cross multiply. So you're going to multiply this up to the top like that, multiply the 3 in, and then take the 12 over to the other side, where it'll become negative 14, and so x would be equal to negative 14 over 3. So x is negative 14 over 3. They now want us to draw the graph. Okay, so we've learned, when we learned how to draw um, hyperbolas, we know that we need a asymptote, well, asymptotes, both of them, we've got them over here. We need an x-intercept. We've just found that over here. Now, what is 14 over 3? 14 over 3 is 4.66. So it's negative 4.66. So if this is negative 4, then it's on um, this side of the asymptote. So it's probably there. Okay, let's get rid of that. And then we still need a y-intercept now. So to find a y-intercept, you make x0. So where's our equation? y equals to minus 2 over x plus 4 minus 3. Now, to find a y-intercept, you make x 0, so 0. And so that's going to end up giving you um, negative a half, take away 3, 
which is then going to be negative 3.5 negative 3.5 so that would be if this is negative 3 then negative 3.5 would have to be a little bit lower down so we can easily get the graph now we know that it's in this quadrant and this quadrant and so then you can just do something like this like that and then like this whoops okay and so let's just go fill this in zero and negative 3.5 and then this one was negative 14 over 3 and zero and then here would fill in x equals to negative 3.5 